Oh my God, it's her. It's that Victoria's Secret model. Matthew Perry, looking back at scenes from Friends when everyone was having such a good time. I'm fine. No, I'm not alone. I don't know, some guy? Yes, he was some guy. <laughs> I don't really watch the show, so that was really fun to look at. And they also loved cracking each other up in real life. These are from the outtakes. There. That was great. <laughs> when the team had its first breakout star, David Schwimmer, he will not leave his other friends behind. David Schwimmer was the hot guy in the first year. I got the first movie, and he came into my dressing room when we were about to renegotiate. And he said, I think we should negotiate together. I think we, and I said, great, idiot. <laughs> that sounds great. Together, they negotiate a new contract. And they'll also have new terms for a flashback, a redo of that fountain scene. This time, it's different. And we were like, warm the water. We're only going to be there for 30 minutes. We're not going to be dancing this time. Like, we had all these rules because we were powerful then. <laughs> Ultimately, as we know, their salaries will set a record. By the last two seasons, a million dollars per episode each. It is a fortune, and it takes us to a central question as we start this story. How does someone whose life is filled with so much luck and talent end up struggling so much? With the disease of addiction, the fear the shame, and hiding the cracks inside. Perry says he's proof that addiction can enter any home, any heart, even one with golden parents. Talk about glamorous parents, huh? Yeah. His handsome dad is John Bennett Perry, a singer, an actor, and once the heartthrob of TV's manliest commercial. My father being the old spice guy. Yes. Hard to bring girls home. <laughs> when that happens, because they're, like, really wanting to talk to my dad. His Canadian mother is the captivating, hard-working press secretary to Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. She set me up for being funny because I just loved her laugh so much. They're both people that take over a room, you know, when they come in. But his very young parents had separated before he was a year old. They lived on opposite coasts and started new families. He remembers being that little boy giving away his mom to her new husband. He remembers when his dad marries a new wife. His step-parents are loving. He has wonderful new siblings. But for some reason, he said, as he grew up, he felt a kind of loneliness, never sure he was good enough to belong. If you try to map the fault lines underneath an addiction, you often find unanswerable questions. Perry says he does remember the day he thought he had found an answer. He's 14 with his Canadian pals and a common teenage rite of passage. I remember that day very well in Ottawa, Canada. I'd never drank before, and I just sort of drank this entire bottle of what was called Anwar's Baby Duck. That was the name of the wine. And I lay in the grass and just was in, was in heaven. And I thought to myself, this must be the way that normal people feel all the time. And I thought that at 14. His friends could drink and stop. But for him, the relief was so easy, it became his destination. But, you know, by the time I was 18, I was drinking, I was drinking every day. You were drinking alone at night? Yeah, I was drinking, at that time, I was drinking out with friends a, a lot. And then at 1.45, I would say, I'm going to go home and I'd race across town to a liquor store, buy a bottle of vodka, and drink as much as I had with the other guys that night. A young man with a naive certainty that fame could fill up the hole inside. You also write, you found yourself getting on your knees, closing your eyes, and praying. God, you can do whatever you want to me. Just please make me famous. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that was the first time I ever um, prayed. And I looked back at it as, you know, a dumb prayer, like a prayer of like a really young person. 
He moves to Los Angeles to live with his father, and since he likes school plays, he tries his hand acting for real. Quickly, he gets TV roles. Act natural. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess I'll buy a lotto ticket, Buff. Including an appearance on the hit Beverly Hills 90210. That's really him, by the way. He was once a nationally ranked tennis player in Canada. And then, at the age of 24, he arrives to audition for that show, which was then called Friends Like Us. He tells the creators about his anxiety and awkwardness with girls. In the middle of that summer, they took us all separately to lunch and said, tell us about you. And I said, well, I'm not an ugly guy, but I have a lot of trouble with women. And that's what Chandler became, you know. You said you also knew there was a mask on the pain. It was a character that couldn't stand silence, so he would make jokes. Oh, no, don't go. I've scared you. I've said too much. I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love. (laughs) Thanks to his scene-stealing charm, his prayer for fame has been answered. His hope to heal the hole inside was not. And that was a dark day for me when I realized that it did not do that that it did not fix what I thought was, what I knew was broken. And now, the added fear of being on a high wire with about 25 million people watching. He says his terror deepens. So does his loneliness and shame. Alone so I could drink. Drinking, therefore alone. I drink, watch the movie, pass out, wake up, drink, watch the movie, pass out. But you had no trouble with the lines, you had no trouble with the timing, you had no trouble showing up every day? Early on, yes. And I made a rule that I would never drink or take anything at work. So I would never do that, but I would show up blindly hungover, like shaking and crazy hungover. But still somehow brilliant on camera, maybe because he's an athlete and young and cares so much. Well, I loved Chandler. I loved the show, and I also knew, remember this, because it's going to be the best time of your life. And I knew it. I couldn't tell my family, I couldn't tell anybody, because they would possibly ask me to stop. I knew that I would never forgive myself if I messed this up. And remember, all those years ago, addiction was even more in the shadows before so many famous people started telling their stories. And soon, Matthew Perry's secret is going to take an even darker turn, as you'll hear the introduction of pills. But at some point along the path, his friends reach out. Jenny, yeah. And she says, we know you were drinking. Yeah, imagine how scary a moment that was. Um, And I said, how? I thought I was hiding it so well. And she said, we can smell it, we can smell it. And, but I wasn't in a position to stop, you know? And that's what addiction is. But she was the one that reached out the most. You know, I'm really grateful to her for that. At another point, cast and creators of the show come into his dressing room. They said, what are you doing? Why are you acting this way? What's going on? We know there's a problem with you. And I said, I'm on medication, I'm really sorry, it won't happen again. In nature, when a penguin is injured, the other penguins group around it and prop it up until it's better. This is what my co-stars on Friends did for me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.